Hey, welcome back to Monroe Live. My name is Chris Lambertson. I'm the resident driver assistance and self-driving vehicle expert here. And today I've got the Kia EV6. We're gonna take a uh, look at some of the um, safety features on this vehicle, take it on the road and show you what it can do. Before we get inside, I wanna walk around the outside, show you some of the um, sensors that we'll uh, be taking a look at uh, and then the safety features that they provide when you're in the vehicle and on the road. So starting up at the front here, got a long range radar sensor down behind this little plate right there that you can see. Um, ultrasonic sensors used for low speed, um, doing things like self parking. Uh, we'll take a look at that uh, as well. So there's six, I believe six of them around the front bumper and fascia and then six on the rear. Um, just the single radar up front um, also have a um, wide angle camera right here in the front bumper. There are three more of those around the vehicles underneath the side mirror, two on the, or one on each side, um, and then one on the back as well. Then up here in the windshield, uh, front facing camera, single lens. Um, you can see from the frit cutout here in the blackout area that it has a fairly uh, very um, wide field of view. Um, so that's going to help uh, detect vehicles that are coming in from the sides and crossing in front of you. Um, so come around to the side here, uh, that, um, the camera I mentioned underneath the mirror right here, there's one on the other side. And then coming back to the back of the vehicle, ultrasonic sensors around the, the rear fascia here, total of six, and then the last camera down here um, underneath the lift gate. Um, right there. So, and also uh, sensors in the back that you can't see. Uh, there are blind spot radars, uh, one in, uh, in each side um, behind the fascia, probably around this area, I would imagine. Could be behind this panel right here. I'm not exactly sure exactly where they're located, but they're going to be looking off to the rear and sides of the vehicle for blind spot safety. And uh, yeah, so that's it from the outside. Let's hop in and take a look. So in the menu here, driver assistance has a bunch of different settings you can configure for the smart cruise control, speed limit warning, driver attention, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, how do I get to the home? First thing I'll show here is the surround viewing camera. So push the button right down here. Um, so those cameras we saw in the front and rear bumpers and underneath the mirrors, they'll stitch together those four feeds to create a 360 view image. So I've got the backup camera and the top down view is the default. I can switch to this mode. It keeps this, but it replaces the rear view camera with this display where I can drag my finger around and look at different, I think I can, can I pinch and zoom? No, on the Mercedes EQS, you can pinch and zoom. This, I just get one zoom level, but it, it's pretty smooth. Just using my finger to scroll around here, the, the image stitching, it's pretty good. You can kind of tell, I don't know if this is coming across on the camera, but you can kind of see where the, the image from each camera kind of starts and ends around the vehicle. And then I was doing some reading online. So these cameras will actually read the parking lines on the pavement here um, and also use the ultrasonic sensors to help the vehicle self park. And it has a kind of like summon mode where you can be outside the vehicle and it'll back into a parking spot for you. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that and also some of the self parking features you can use while you're inside the vehicle. So let's go. So this is similar to the summon mode that Tesla has on their vehicles. So if you're in a say you're in parking in a tight parking spot, for instance, um, you can we'll put the vehicle in park and then we'll turn it off. And I'm gonna go ahead and get out with the key and. Okay, so now we're outside the vehicle. We're gonna pretend that the parking spot behind us is a really tight spot in my garage. So just use your uh, you know, creativity. So I got out of the vehicle. I turned it off before I got out. So I'm gonna hit lock. And then it has a remote start type button that I'll hold that and get the vehicle to power up remotely, I think. Maybe I need to hit lock twice and hold the remote start. Now the hazard lights are flashing. And I should be able to hold this button on the key fob 
right here to move the car backwards. And let's see what it does. There it goes. Yep. Whoops. Yeah. So it's using the ultrasonic sensors and the cameras to back the car into the spot. I kind of intentionally parked it at a slightly off angle, so we'll see if it corrects itself when it gets back there. Now it stopped for some reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> it did this earlier, too. Here it goes again. I'm still holding the button down. We'll see what it does if it crosses that line or not, or uses the steering to... No, nope, now it's just... Try the pushing again. I did just do this five minutes ago off camera, testing it, so I'm not sure why it's... Could be the rain is maybe getting on some of the sensors and it doesn't like that. I don't know. Let's see if I can move it forward back up here and try again. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be too happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think it's going to go any further. Let's go inside and maybe there'll be a message uh, once you get in the car that tells us why it's not working properly. Yep. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not exactly sure why it didn't want to go back into the spot. You can see there's nothing back here preventing it. Um, it could have been maybe it was seeing this line here and knew it was going to cross the line, but it doesn't have the ability to steer itself uh, when it's doing that parking maneuver. So maybe if it stops raining, we can try again. Maybe that, that's the issue. So anyway, let's hit the road and take a look at some of uh, the other features. Yeah, so with those parking features, I'm coming from my Tesla where when I want to the vehicle to park itself in a parking spot, it really just, you know, I come up in front of a spot and I stop and it prompts me if I want to start doing that or not. And it's pretty intuitive, easy to use. Um, this one, not really not so much. Um, the Mercedes was kind of the same way. It was a little confusing the first time um, that you tried to use those features. Uh, however, I guess once you learn how to do that, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Or maybe when you, you know, buy a vehicle, um, hopefully at the dealership, you know, they'd give you some training on how to use some of those safety features like that. Uh, so far, the ride is seems pretty comfortable. Definitely a softer ride than a Tesla. The auto wipers are on auto mode. They, they seem to be doing okay. We'll see how they do for the rest of the drive. And Kia has some modes in this vehicle where you can um, pick the sound that's getting piped in to the vehicle. I'm not sure if the cameras again is going to pick up that noise, but I'll do a, when I accelerate it gets louder, so I'll kind of slow down a little bit and see if we can get that to pick up. And let me go into sport mode too, because this car is supposed to be pretty quick, so we'll give it a little, yeah, maybe that's coming through the, the mic on the camera. Kind of a spacey noise. I don't particularly, I'm not too fond of that, but I guess some people like it. They did enough focus groups and studies to justify it. And I'm sure there's a setting in the menu to, to, uh, to turn it off, so. So and right now, lane keep assist is active. It's always active when you're driving unless you turn it off, so by default it turns on. So it's gave me a couple little nudges um, as I'm driving here. You can see the this icon up here on the cluster, so it's gray right now, letting me know the system's not um, not not uh, not armed or ready to provide steering assistance. Once I get going, maybe about 40 miles an hour, yeah, it turns green, and uh, we'll see it better on the highway because I'll be going a little faster. And when it's providing assistance, I believe it was just flashing. So, and then when I get on the highway here we'll be able to turn on their, I believe what they call drive pilot assist, uh, which is a lane centering and adaptive cruise control features that work together to provide a level two driving function um, on the highway. So once we get up here and uh, we'll see how those work, see how they drive through some of the, the curves around here and see how comfortable uh, those features are as well. 
even going 35 and noticing a decent amount uh, of roll in the body going around that curve, which is maybe more than I expected given how low the center of gravity is in this vehicle and you know, it's all the weight down there from the battery. So it drives a little more like a traditional kind of crossover instead of a kind of that classic electric vehicle you know, feel where you can kind of tell that the weight, there's all that weight down well. So, feels rather maybe s softly sprung compared to other, uh, other EVs. But it makes for a pretty comfortable ride. So I would say this is more comfortable than the Model Y that I drive most days. So the Mercedes um, had a similar similar feel but it's a Mercedes so you kind of expect that. So we'll get on the highway here. I'll get ACC and lane centering so you can see all these symbols here as the steering wheel telling me that's the lane centering has my set speed for the adaptive cruise control and then my time gap distance setting over here so I believe if I use my steering wheel control, it'll shorten shorten that distance if I want to follow closer or further away. So we'll see what the lane centering is doing, yeah. So now it's nudging me back over into the lane. Oop, there we go. And it's just kind of keeping me nice and centered. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take over here to get back in the next lane so I don't have to get off the highway. And this, this system does um, support lane changes uh, if, as long as you signal. So let's get the cruise control going again. There we go. Uh, get my set speed back up and then we'll do a lane change here and I'm gonna indicate on the turnstock. Pops up a little camera view for me. And it's did not want to change lanes, I guess, because there's a vehicle, vehicle coming up over behind me over the left. There's another vehicle coming up, about to be in my blind spot, so I'll hold off for a second. I've got a nice indicator here on the cluster, the little red, those red lines when that vehicle was passing to show me there is a vehicle in the blind spot. Um, so that's that's pretty nice. And little shows a little box as that, that minivan went by, indicating to me that it the system detects that vehicle. And, now it's out of range and not being shown anymore. So we'll try the lane change again. So I got the green in arrow indicating it's moving me over, telling me to keep my hands on the steering wheel even though they are. So I've gotten the hands on steering wheel warning a couple times and so the system just might be tuned a little uh, a little more sensitive uh, than some others. So how that hands-on detection works, it, there's a sensor in the steering column that detects essentially when you're holding the vehicle, uh, or excuse me, when you're holding the steering wheel, um, you're creating a small amount of torque in the steering column just from holding it because the wheels of the vehicle, which are mechanically connected up to the steering wheel, those are always moving a little bit, um, you know, as you, even if you're driving straight, just you know, over the, the um, small bumps in the road, the wheels are always moving a little bit. So when you're holding the steering wheel, that small movement creates um, very small amounts of torque that the you know, sensor can then see and determine if you're holding the wheel or if you're not holding the wheel, then the wheels, as they're doing their very small movements, um, are turning the steering wheel. If you're not holding it, and then you're not, you're not, not, um, not making those very small torques uh, that the sensor can read. So most, most systems kind of work, work that way. Some will use some sensors on the steering wheel to actually detect the physical touch of your hands. Um, others might use you know, small cameras around the cabin as well. The lane centering I've noticed is um, very smooth. It's not really, doesn't really feel intrusive when it's making uh, small corrections or anything. So we're going to go through a couple a couple larger curves here, so we'll see how it handles that. Uh, so far pretty good. Entered the curve nice and smooth, um, which tells me that the camera system is able to see far enough down the road to detect the curve 
um, detect um, how sharp that is and provide the steering input at the right time to not make a harsh movement. And same thing on the exit here, we'll see how it, how it carries me out. So yeah, nice and smooth. I have noticed um, the automatic lane changes in this as compared to uh, at least my Tesla are a little bit smoother. The Tesla can be kind of abrupt. The Mercedes was pretty smooth too when I was driving that system. Um, but I think this is even feels a little smoother um, than that one as well. We're going to go go back again. It does take a little bit longer than feels comfortable to actually start the lane change after you ask it to do that. Which, depending on kind of what traffic is doing around you, can be a little um, annoying, I guess, if you will. So there's another another pretty good curve here on the highway. We'll see how we take it through this. Got the added challenge of some traffic cones on the right side of the car. and smooth. One thing I'm not sure if we'll be able to get the camera to show is there's um, a HUD display you know, in, on this vehicle and the windshield so it's actually projecting things like my speed, ACC information. And it's also showing me a little kind of white line that looks like it's on, like projected on the back of the vehicle ahead of me showing me kind of I think it's kind of telling me where the where my vehicle is trying to control its um, its speed to. So it's showing me visually that the system detects that truck ahead of me, and it's kind of showing me almost where it's at, like this little line kind of floating between its tires, and as it gets closer or further away, the line kind of moves with it. I would say overall, I really like um, this system. It's smooth. Um, the HMI that they uh, have um, as part of that system the display here in the cluster and the HUD. Um, they, those little touches to show you that they're seeing the vehicle in front of you, controlling your speed and distance, um, goes a long way to inspire uh, trust in the system very early on. Instead of having to kind of wait and see, you know, drive it, you know, for a couple weeks um, to see how much you can really trust the system. But this one does a really good job off the bat. And so that was, um, the Kia EV6 uh, overview of the uh, safety features on the vehicle, driver assistance features, uh, overall impressions. Um, quick takeaway: the lateral control felt a little loose for my liking, um, but I think from a you know kind of zooming out um, on that at that aspect, it's going to force people to be more engaged in the driving task. So I think that's a good thing. Um, not that you shouldn't be not engaged when you're driving anyway. So, but it's just going to prompt people to. Um, you know, to do that. Uh, the ACC uh, control felt really good. Um, the HMI in the vehicle, um, the little things they do to tell you that you know, the system sees the car in front of you, sees cars you know, that are coming up on your left or right in your blind spot, uh, all really good. Um, so yeah, overall, really comfortable driving car, nice on the highway. I would drive this up north or on road trips uh, so long as there was places to charge it in, uh, in a heartbeat. Um, so yeah, if uh, you liked what you saw, click like, subscribe, and uh, if you have any thoughts or comments, leave them below. If you want to see um, more stuff like this on vehicles on the road, let us know as well. Thank you. Yeah.